In ancient times, Molokai was regarded as Molokai Pule O'o, Island of Powerful Prayer. The name was given because on several accounts, it is said that the revered kahuna of the island prayed away invading armies by calling upon the winds and seas. Aloha, I am Guy Hanohano Naeu. I was born and raised on this beautiful island of Molokai. In a small community like ours, everybody's opinion counts. So it's important that we form our opinions out of awareness and understanding. We all know the possible economic benefit that cruise ships might bring, but what about the negative impacts, the possible damage and change that this industry can cause? Is it worth it? The following video provides answers to questions you might be asking. Please watch it, then decide for yourself. situation. We're fighting a multi-million dollar or a billion dollar industry as you will hear. You may like us or you don't like us, but what I will stand on is that we will do our homework before we bring forward issues that you need to understand. Those ships keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Granny, the whole family tripping out and spending millions on gambling and booze and shipboard shopping. Nightlife is free and food comes by the bucket load. The 17 major cruise lines are up to their gunnels in money. Profits last year, $1.5 billion. Tax bill last year, barely a spit in the ocean. They are, for all intents and purposes, U.S. corporations based in the U.S., uh, making 95 or more percent of their profits from U.S. citizens utilizing uh, you know, our ports, uh, our, our resources, and paying no taxes. It's a $12 billion industry. It is estimated they pay less than 1% taxes on their profits. What's real is the issue of pollution. Several Royal Caribbean ships decided to cut costs by dumping oily waste, then they just flat lied about it. When caught red-handed, they claimed they were not subject to U.S. laws. They finally pled guilty to 21 felony counts, including criminal conspiracy to illegally dump in U.S. waters, and were fined $27 million. If you look at a typical cruise ship, say it has 2,000 passengers, it'll have about eight or 900 crew. So say there's roughly about 3,000 people on board. That ship will generate 270,000 gallons of gray water every day. That ship will generate about 30,000 gallons of sewage every day. That ship will generate about 7,000 gallons of oiled bilge water every single day. It will generate about 23 gallons of toxic wastes every single day. pollution is probably the biggest thing, uh, just from everything that deals with the, the tourists, um, uh, helicopters, airplanes, the train, the ships themselves, uh, it's just a noisy place and I think it really drives stress level up here. Air pollution, the ships sit out there in the summertime in a south wind, if it was blowing like today, the 
exhaust and stuff just drifts right over town. Alaska is supposed to be a unique experience. I cannot see how sharing downtown with 9,000 people, and this street is what, 900 feet long? How you can have 900 feet of street occupied by 9,000 people be a unique experience. Even our visitors are really not given a good recreational opportunity because there's just no place that you can be anymore, that you can be by yourself. Uh, generally, the visitor that comes to Molokai stays here, and then uh, he stays here for a few days, or maybe a week, or maybe two or three weeks. So economically, that is a visitor that we want to have on this island. People that come here for the day is like what the original guy said, that was they come in herds, and that's exactly what they're going to do, come in herds. So uh, uh, vendor or anybody that's uh, you know, taking care of anybody that's coming in, uh, they're going to be overwhelmed. And if uh, I, I don't think anybody here on Molokai, especially living here or born and raised here, would like, you know, the reason they're here is because we don't have herds of people. All they're interested in is numbers, basically. I mean, the more, the better, which I just don't agree with. It's not the more, the better. Um, and I think uh, we should have tried to limit it or at least make them pay for what they're doing to the quality of life here. Eventually, ship, uh, the stores get bought out. So they come to town for a while and they kind of establish themselves as a port. And then once they do that, you see, new sh you see new stores showing up in town, like Columbia Emeralds, Little Switzerland, things like this, you know? We, we never had a Little Switzerland in Haines, Alaska before. You know, selling things that were made God knows where. And, and the people come off the ships, and these are the stores that they're going into. Um, the ships actually have, a, they have the, the, what are called shore ex people on board, shore excursion directors. And these people tell the people who are getting off the ship where they should go. And the stores and the tours that do really well in town, the few that do, are the ones who give a kit back to the ships. Cruise ship anchors can destroy Molokai reefs through groundings, impact from anchors, and chains or resuspension of sediment by anchors, chains, and propellers. In 1996, Holland America Alliance, MS Mazdan, and this is the sister ship of the ship that's coming in, the staffing down, paid $1 million in fines after dragging its anchor over 1,000 meters of coral reef in the Grand Cayman Island. In 1998, a Norwegian cruise line vessel ran aground and destroyed 80% of a coral reef that's 4,400 square feet in a national park off Cancun, Mexico. So what's happening today is one of the many steps we're taking to get answers to questions that we cannot get answers to. What impact is this boat going to have on Molokai, its reefs especially? This is study what is out there, um, determine with numbers how much fish, how much limu, how much bugs, how much inverts get out there so that in case the cruise ships do come in, we can know what has changed? Huh? We're forming a baseline now so in the future we can document it better. We're also going to be training some of the local guys to, to conduct the surveys that we are conducting so that they can continue to do the monitoring. I'm excited that we have this opportunity to go down with these people that know a lot about um, under the water. It's a great experience to learn and just very appreciative for them caring and helping us take care of our aina. The device we brought over here today to um, photo document uh, the reefs in Molokai is called a photo quad and it consists of um, this digital camera attached here on the top and an uh, underwater strobe so that we can dive as deep as we need to go and we'll get plenty of light and the digital camera actually takes a photograph right in this frame and this is the same setup that we used recently up in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. So basically, you look at this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Go right down what is underneath those.